Welcome to our house. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to our house, YouTube. This is the first time you're seeing all of us yeah. at our house. And we are so excited. I'm going to walk you through. Well, we both are. Yeah. You guys are probably going to go play, right? Yeah. yeah. But we're, we're going to walk you through. And he here's big boy. He <laughs> and we're going to tell you all about how we renovated five years ago, what we would do different, if anything, and a few tips and tricks along the way. <laughs> Welcome back to our channel, you guys. My name is Kristen Forgione. I'm the founder, principal designer, and creative director of The Lifestyle Co. And this is my man, Big Sexy, yeah. as he's known in our company. But no, his name's Vince. And he's my husband. He's the CEO of The Lifestyle Co. And he's making his YouTube debut. Everyone's waiting for it. On this video <laughs> here at our house. So um, I wanted him here today because we're going to walk you through and tell you all about what we did to this little house. And I say little house because it's a builder basic mm -hmm. track home. A lot of you probably live in one very similar. It's not even 2,200 square feet, mm -hmm. but it has become such an incredible place for us. I truly feel like we grew up here. We, Absolutely. our marriage blossomed here. Yeah. We have been married for almost 11 years. It, no, it's going to be 12. 12. <laughs> It's gonna be 12 yeah. years. It's gonna be 12 years in like five months. Yeah. Um, and we have two little girls who you just saw, Harper Rose, she's 10, and Sutter Ann, she's seven. And so they, of course, live here with us. We have two dogs, King and Linda. You may hear one or both of them bark at some point. Um, but this house has just turned into such an amazing place that I couldn't stand the thought of leaving it, going to the ODL house, which you have also seen on YouTube, and not telling you all of the things that we love about it and kind of how we did it. Because if you live in a home similar, I think that we'll probably be able to give you some tips that will help you. Sure. Right? Absolutely. Okay, so let's start here. So we're in the entry, and one of the things that we loved about this floor plan all those years ago is the fact that the mudroom, which is right here, was between the front door and the garage. So our garage is here, and then our front door is right here. And when we bought this house, this was a tech space. So it was really just like this weird countertop right here. That, Not useful at all. Yeah, that the builder at some point must have thought was really great. Um, except what was really great is it had an outlet. So we kept the outlet, and now we charge here a lot. Um, but we built this all out. When we got Linda, we also built this crate for her. So it's all contained. Um, but the secret to a happy and organized family, in my opinion, is a mudroom. <laughs> so this, 100%. this had to happen. My uncle ended up building it, this for us, so it was really cost effective. Um, these days, the cost of renovation and new build is literally skyrocketing, just like everything else. So if you have friends and family that are willing to help you, like ours did six and a half years ago, use them. Ask them what they want to do. Ask them how they can help you. Ask them what they're good at. Um, feed them well. Pay them if you can, um, and they'll usually keep coming back for, for more sure. because they're your friends and your family. Yeah. So that truly is how we did this house. We spent next to nothing, truly pennies, um, yeah. especially compared to today's standards. Yeah. Um, and we did a lot of the work ourselves. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're gonna tell you about that. So from the mud room, we just cross over into this space and this became our wellness room. Oh wow, we needed like WD-40 yeah, that, that thing. Um, but the barn door was an early ad. We did this right when we renovated and I'm so glad that we did. It is so beautiful. It's horizontal shiplap. It has this beautiful frame. It's so heavy. It was installed and made really beautifully by one of our friends. Um, so we got really lucky with that and it allowed us a secondary space. So pre-COVID, pre-quarantine, this was just another den. We built this cabinet kind of floating sideboard situation. And you guys, we did this with in-stock cabinets from Lowe's. Okay. So, I mean, really cost effective. I think- You and I did this in like an afternoon? Yeah, I think yeah. each of these cabinet banks was- A couple bucks maybe? I was gonna say maybe yeah. 150. Um, and then we just used a cabinet skin as the top. Uh, we always had a TV in here because the girls would come in here when they were little and watch cartoons and all that. And then, like I said, as things kind of changed, we were noticing that the space wasn't being used as much as we thought it could be. Then COVID hits. We're all working from home. We're all schooling from home. We are not working out, going to the sure. gym. Can't go to the gym anymore, yeah. So we ordered this treadmill on bestbuy.com <laughs> yeah. like minute one of COVID, got it, and then basically just turned this whole space into our wellness room. So Vince uses it every single morning. Every single morning yeah. You love it. Um, he uses it more than I do, which you could probably tell by his awesome physique. Versus for sure. Mine. Um, for sure. Uh, yeah. You mean? <laughs> 
a lot of work that has been you, put into this you room. You look great, baby. Yes, thank okay, you. Okay, that's what I thought. You do too. Um, <laughs> but uh, what else was I going to tell you about this space? So. It really has become such a versatile space for us and, and we really love it. I'd highly recommend if you have any dedicated space to use as a wellness room, you should. Um, at one point we had a hanging chair in here that the girls really loved too. So our whole family can kind of use it, which we still like. And that's why we had a den. Um, why do we call it a wellness room and not a workout room? Because I wanted to be able to drink wine in here and not feel like a total loser drinking wine in my gym. So it's a wellness space. So if I need to like take a moment and get zen, whether it's with wine or without, I don't feel like a freak. And the best part of this room is every morning coming in while I'm working out is these beautiful pictures of our girls. I just love like waking up early in the morning by myself coming in and looking at that. It just puts a smile on my face and great way to kick the day off. Are you gonna cry? Uh, <laughs> and we're taking those with us to the yes. to the new house. We put it hopefully back into the gym again. They'll come with yeah. us for sure. So an entryway in a home is so important. And I also think that an entryway in a track home or a builder basic home is really rare. So it's one of the things that we loved most about this floor plan when we first set foot in it. Um, this entryway has really taken shape, if you will, with that renovation we did all those years ago. And I think two reasons why it really works is because one, this had a huge soffit. So as you walk through the house, you'll see there's still a soffit kind of coming into the great room, but there was another one, kind of like right where you're standing, yeah, babe. Here, here. And so it just totally cut the space in half. So it was like this weird little entry here and then another like weird little room here that didn't elongate things, didn't work, didn't have any overhead lighting. So the first thing I did was rip out that soffit and I actually think you ripped it out. I believe I did <laughs> ripped and out, reframed it. Ripped out the soffit and then added these three overhead lights could have gone with pendants, but I really like the flush bounce in this space. Our ceiling height is 108 inches, so that's nine feet, probably again, pretty similar to what you might be working with. And the reason I chose flush mounts here versus pendants is because I have pendants in my kitchen. And in intimate floor plans, you have to be selective. I can't have a bunch of drop fixtures everywhere or it'll cut off the house and make it feel weird and they can compete. So in this case, I use flush mounts and they kind of guide you into the space and show you where you're going. Same thing with the flooring inlay. So this inlay, when we first laid it, it was like a traditional color, kind of red brick. That we hunted down for, I believe that said like New York and Chicago I on it. I loved it, I loved it so much at the yeah. time. And then like we lived with it for a little while and I hated it. So I called my painter and begged him to come paint my floor white. And he was like, um, I'm sorry, ma'am, we don't paint floors white. Like, what do you mean you're gonna hate that? And I was like, just do it and we'll figure it out. So this has been a couple years and yeah. we love it. It's just white latex it's held paint. Up for sure. It has, like we <laughs> don't do anything special to it. I was okay with it aging a little bit. So the inlay also helps guide you, right? So I'm kind of following the pattern of the overhead lighting. Oh, I look like a flight attendant. That's kind of always been Down my dream. Down the runway, yeah. Um, not now, <laughs> I, I don't envy the flight attendants now. But um, so yeah, so it kind of helps, helps guide you. Um, tell me, we were, as we were talking about this, he was already trying to take credit for something that was my not- My one idea. Not his idea. Yes, it was. It was not idea. your idea. Yeah. Okay. So what was your idea, babe? So obviously in track builds, um, typically have that entryway and that little coat closet, um, which is kind of awkward in Arizona because we obviously don't, don't have, have coats, coats here. <laughs> um, so there was this kind of awkward coat closet um, from the entryway here. Um, and then it was right about here. And we were like, what do we do with this? This is such an awkward yeah. space. So if we'll, we'll swoop back around to the other side is we had a little mini pantry in there. I'm like, how do we make our pantry much, much larger? So my idea, uh, um, close this in, um, which I did um, some help from, I believe your dad helped me and a couple of your uncles. Um, we close this in, frame this in, and then when you swoop back around, um, it uh, kept it open on the other side and made the pantry Way twice bigger. the size. Yeah. So and, it worked out well And for us. gives me an entry moment, right? So in Absolutely. an entry, you should have, if you have the space, you should have a table, you should have a mirror. Um, you want to be able to make the space feel bigger and most importantly, welcoming, right? Having a coat closet here really doesn't help us when we have a mud room right here. So it would have been redundant. I also hated the idea, which this build on both sides of this like peninsula island thing had a door that opened this way that just completely like cut off this hallway. It's terrible. I hated the idea. Um, so anyways, we filled, we filled that in and it worked out really well. So come with us this way. Okay, so now we're in the kitchen, great room, all day dining area. And you guys, this space was weird, <laughs> weird. I was a new designer, if you will, when we bought this house. I think we had owned maybe two or three houses by the time we bought this one. And my business was like three years old. Vince wasn't in it full time yet. So this was kind of my first opportunity to flex my designer muscles, if you will, um, which I think worked out, <laughs> but 
I was also doing it on zero dollars, like yeah. pennies. And the space was just so weird. I'm still proud of us to this day that we were able to figure out like how to make this space work because truly it was freaking weird. I think we measured this island like 17 times so, yeah. to figure out the right <laughs> footprint of it. So if you can imagine this, the island used to go this way. So like I'm standing here and I would be like in the kitchen cooking. And it was so weird because it just like completely cut this off. And as most designers, I think, I hate anything crooked, diagonal, not straight, not symmetrical. Not true. I love asymmetry. It was like an A-frame trapezoid. It was, it was, it was very so awkward. weird. It was such a weird thing. So that was the first thing that I was like, okay, this has to go. Also, um, this mamma jamma. So when we bought this house, we 100% thought that we were so smart and we were gonna be able to knock this out and move this wall kind of this way and make it a kind of a kind of a full U like U 90 shape. degree U yeah. shape, exactly. Um, as you can see by the fact that it is still alive and well, <laughs> we were not able to rip it out at all. So truly like day one of demo, we get uh -huh. a hammer and start kind of demoing it. Yeah. And on the other side of this is our water heater. The dumber thing is yeah. we should have known that because the water sure. heater is like not disguised. It's in the garage. You can totally... And you can see the opposite yeah. cutout of it on the other side in the garage. I don't know how we didn't like realize yeah. this, but so then it became like operation. How can we deal with this huge eyesore? I personally think it's like hideous mm -hmm. and make it look like we meant to keep it. <laughs> so my solution to everything at that time was subway tile and still kind of is. It's a great- Tile everything. Yeah, just tile it. <laughs> Um, it's a great material and tile it when it's simple and clean. So what's more timeless than subway tile, right? Pretty much nothing. It's still definitely a material that you can use and make look really great. So um, I may have gotten a little carried away because I literally did from that side of the kitchen all the way across and up and around. But again, I had to make the kitchen feel luxe and feel like it wasn't an right. afterthought. It's the original cabinets too. So we didn't want to take them up to the ceiling. So hey, let's subway tile up to the ceiling. Right. I thought that. Still looks great. Yeah, I do. I really love it. And it didn't dawn on me to like add this little magnetic strip for knives until like a couple years ago. And I truly think it's such a beautiful statement. I love this vintage um, stump that's here. I just feel like this this actually like has kind of become the corner of our kitchen. Mm -hmm. The girls sit here when they come home from school and talk to me and like, I don't know, it just- Yeah, we get it, ready in the morning. They sit, get their, put their shoes on here. Yeah, 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 it just totally worked out. And, yeah. and I think that's another lesson in kind of the design gods as we always say. Like sometimes just don't fight it. There was a very brief moment that I was like, I, I don't want this house if I can't knock that out. And Vince was like, well, too bad we own it. So let's so put like, some hanging <laughs> knives there. <laughs> <laughs> that We had to get creative. Yeah. So anyway, so um, as Vince mentioned, yes, we kept the existing cabinets. So you can paint existing cabinets if they're painted correctly. Um, painting cabinets is not the same as painting walls. It uses typically a different type of paint. So either do your research or make sure that you hire an experienced cabinet painter. These have held up really well and it has been over five years. Yeah. So I'm you still- I had to touch them up once. Yeah, I know. I'm still like very surprised that it, that it worked out really that well. Yeah. Another part of this space that was really crucial for me was making sure that I had enough space to cook. I cook a lot. I don't love cooking on electric, but honestly, it's all I've ever had, except when I would go to my parents, they have gas. So at one point we wanted to run a gas line, all the things so cost prohibitive. It's very expensive to run a gas line. And when we found out that we couldn't remove this, it became even more cumbersome to get the gas over here. So um, I went with a slide in range, which I don't know if you've ever noticed, but there's some electric ranges and some gas ranges that have like a back area where usually the, the clock will be. The difference between that type of range, which is a standalone range or a slide in range is like 500 bucks. And truly the difference in aesthetic is life changing. So, so, so much better. So we went with a slide in range, which I really think helped make this feel a little bit more high end. And then we removed the microwave that was above the range, which also is probably pretty common in most of your homes or if you live in a track home. And we added this vent hood. So the vent hood still still returns right out above, which is exactly what would happen with your microwave. So it's actually a really easy swap out. This vent hood was like a hundred bucks from, from Home Depot and it looks so much better. So without the microwave here, so you can see like the microwave used to come down to like here. We were able to do a range inlay. Same thing, this brick used to be that same color as our flooring inlay in that like very traditional red brick color. I decided after living here for a while that I couldn't stand it anymore, so I painted it and it totally worked out. So it still looks really good. 
If you're disappointed with some of your design choices, figure out a pivot, right? I know that word's like kind of nasty now after COVID, but figure out a way that you can work with it without totally ripping it out. Or if you do have the budget to rip it out, just make sure that you're ripping it out for something that's obviously gonna mean something to you. Um, another thing that I wanna point out in here is our butcher block countertops. So this is another one of those things that we are like, okay, we have enough budget for one slab, <laughs> literally. And the one slab needs to go around our sink, which I'll show you in a little bit. I also had to have a farmhouse sink, so that probably could have covered another slab because those suckers are expensive. But um, we had to figure out how to place countertops in the rest of our kitchen without spending a ton of money. So we went with butcher block countertops. I can honestly tell you, these countertops have held up so well, but we don't cut on them. We actually cut on cutting boards. So I've heard before from clients or friends that they have a butcher block countertop and they don't understand why it's looking so crappy. Um, can't cut on these. You should really treat them like they are a countertop. Use a cutting board, use hot pads or trivets so that you're not burning your countertops. But these are from Ikea. They are still a great product. Ikea puts out a great butcher block. Um, Home Depot puts out a great butcher block and Floor and Decor does as well. So I honestly think for like 96 inches and by 25 or 24 inches deep, these are like 150 bucks. Vince and I rented a table saw because we didn't own one and we put them in ourselves all by ourselves and we're able to save ourselves thousands of dollars in countertop material and then also countertop fabrication. Moving through the kitchen, as I mentioned, had to have a farmhouse sink.